Welcome to Grave Overload. I'm Anthony, and I just want to go through and talk a little bit about AMD's announcements coming up and the councils and just some thoughts. AMD came out and had an announcement on Twitter saying that there will be an announcement the next day, which happened to be an announcement uh, for the two October events that are going to happen October 8th for the Zen 3 CPU announcements and then uh, October 28th for the Radeon GPU announcements. So I'm actually getting pretty excited about these two announcements. I'm, ex well, I'm pretty excited. I was excited about Nvidia. I'm excited about any announcement because it's fun that new technology is coming out and I actually get to see it and well not all the time get to touch it because I just don't have a great amount of money to throw out all this stuff but be able to see what it can do hopefully have more competition and help us get better performing computers at a lower cost which is what we like to see with technology progressing and overall though if anyone was upset about AMD saying hey I got an announcement tomorrow and it's gonna be an announcement about the announcements I think you're gonna be get ready for more of that here in the future with marketing trying to drag everything out with everyone trying to keep their products in the limelight for as long as possible it, it's only gonna get worse I think and either we as consumers have to just ignore it but human nature says that we want to know more all the time and they're feeding off of this so um, oh, I guess that's the way it's gonna be for a little bit overall though I think I like to see some things with Zen 3 announcement if there's gonna be the 4000 series I really like to see that 3900 be a 16 core R, you know make that the R9 series and then the R7 be the 10 core and the 12 core make the R5 is the 8 core and then put a quad core and um, a 6 core in the um, R3 section so you got those breakups and that's what I kind of would like to see in the core count breakdown do I think AMD will do it oh uh, that's a toss-up to me I, I am leaning towards no just because I think AMD is kind of going to stick with something else in there. But since the consoles, my thought is since the consoles are going to come out here and they're going to be eight cores, that's where your mid range should be. And you, so your R5, which is your mid range, should be that. Then you should have your R7s and maybe your higher end, so make that your 10 core and your 12 core. And then your R9 should be your flagship. Kind of like Intel's i9 should be its flagship. Then you go to your thread rippers and your high-end desktop I'd like to see that now you can put your graphics in there if we want to go through that maybe I should make another video of you know laying out exactly where I think it all is and writing it all out but um, overall I'd like to see that make that mid-range your eight cores and we go from there pricing slotting make it kind of where the current pricing slotting is for each you know the R3 the R5 the R7 and the R9 and kind of slot those in you can even make the R9 um, like 650 or something like that that's 16 core and that would be just a normal price of you know the 6 core coming down in price or 16 core coming down in price over time but also increasing the baseline of that R9 over time as well to get your what is it ever selling price that AMD wants to go up to go up a little bit so I think that would be both beneficial to consumers and also beneficial to AMD which is I think a win-win now with the Radeon um, a GPU announcement which people are rumoring to be the RX I think they even had a thing in Fortnite to be 6000 so the RX 6000 series RDNA 2 GPUs I do expect them to go after the 3080 if they do not I think that's going to be most people are going to consider that a big disappointment I myself I'm going to be disappointed because I want to see that full stack competing. It doesn't have to go up to 3090, mostly because the 3090 is out of my price range and I don't consider it to begin with. But the 3090 is a great aspirational product that Nvidia came out with and I'm glad that they did. I'm glad that uh, Nvidia seems to be putting out a card there that they don't want anyone to beat. So it seems like they still have a little bit of competitive nature there that they just don't want to beat. However, that 3080, with what is it only 10 gigs of RAM 11 gigs of RAM something like that uh, that's I think where AMD can take advantage of it and have 16 gigs of RAM I want 
AMD to be trading blows with Nvidia in that 3080. Nvidia is considering that 3080 the flagship GPU, so it's only natural that AMD should have something to compete with Nvidia's flagship GPU, even though 3090 is on top of that. And if they were able to do that, I think that would be very attractive and people would want to look back and forth a lot to see which is better for them. Even they may go down and compare power and everything else. I don't see power as a great uh, determinant factor. More when I look at a GPU, it's, you know, frames per second, where it stacks up and, you know, memory, etc. Uh, I love a new GPU. I don't know if I'll get one this year. Um, I'm just, you know, I have the Spectrum monitor on pre-order, the 4K one, and I like to upgrade my uh, Xbox to one of the consoles releasing this year. But I'd also like a new GPU because this one is either drivers are acting up or it's acting up. I'm leaning towards the drivers, but time will tell. I might do a video on that. I'm still diagnosing what's going on here, and I need weeks on end of testing because this is a problem that only appears every once in a while but that's a side note no need to get into that here let's flip back to the uh, 6000 series i do i do hope though at this same time i think amd would be, be very smart to kind of show off that complete stack show that 60 card show the 70 card equivalent and show that 80 card so show the flagship all the way down to 60 you can come out to 50 later i'm okay with that but put those in there so people can let's say somebody wants to buy something and you're going to have something maybe out around christmas time around the holiday time you can show that off people want to go buy that right this is going to be a christmas holiday season where there's a lot of new products out and you and people are going to be wanting to get something i feel like in the tech realm it's been a um not such a great fun year you know it's been kind of a down year for just everything going on so with some excitement people want to play games people want to get out and you know have a new part in their computer so where's that GPU part or the CPU part that I can go build my system off of or go replace or have a nice gift for somebody that you know somebody's giving out you know three four five hundred dollar gifts where is that gift that I can do and uh, I think a 60 card equivalent would be a great option for AMD. Now, uh, I, I really and I really hope that they do it. I I don't know. I haven't heard much about what's going on in that realm, but that's just what I like to see there. Um, what I think AMD will do overall, and this is just me going off the top of my head here, is I think they're going to do kind of match the 7080 series. They're going to go after those two. And just stick and just go with those and release a lower end tier later, which I I like to see more coming out, and that's just my personal preference here. But um, overall, let's talk a little bit about the consoles here. We got a little bit more from the Microsoft Xbox. The Xbox Series X is going to be four ninety nine. I think that's a great price. I think uh, Microsoft did a great job on that price point. And we will see where the 6000 series GPUs compare to those consoles. We'll also see where the uh, NVIDIA 3000 GPUs compare with the consoles. I expect the consoles to be, I think, more powerful than what people give them um, expect for, right? It's a new console generation. They want to set a new standard going forward with that console generation. And, yeah, uh, I think that... People thinking that the consoles are buried by NVIDIA's new uh, graphics cards. I think that they'll be much surprised at how um, how the consoles compete with them. And I do expect, like everyone saying, yes, the uh, NVIDIA card has more, uh, or the Xbox, well, Xbox Series X has more uh, RDNA compute units than the... Um, PlayStation 5. However, don't just write it off, right? There's clock speeds involved, there's other optimizations, and we don't know what Microsoft and Sony did for optimizations in their consoles or what technologies they did. Um, we, we, we haven't, we've seen a, a bit about the Xbox GPU, but we haven't seen much about the Sony GPU. And who knows, there's been, I think Moore's Law is dead, his YouTube channel, great one to go watch. He said that um, there is 
there's optimizations that might be in RDNA 3 that are not in RDNA 2 in the PS5. So that's something to take into consideration about what the PS5 can do that maybe other consoles or even the graphics cards will not be able to do. And that just goes par for the course of the evolution of the graphics cards. You can't fit everything in a release. If you did, you'd be working on a product forever and never actually getting it out. So that's just the cycle of things. You have to cut it off at some point and it gets released. There's you know, and then drivers need to come out, etc. And maybe AMD's been putting more effort in their drivers, making sure the drivers are more rock solid than the last generation drivers, which is, you know, we've, we've had some issues with them, right? So, but the 499 price point is great for AMD. The 299 price point for the Xbox Series S is also a great price point. I think Sony is going to go, um, I think Sony's going to go around 375 to I would say about four hundred dollars for the digital and then either five hundred dollars and match Xbox for the non digital version or be a little bit above it. If I was Sony, I would even maybe do three fifty and or four hundred fifty and five fifty. I think Sony could be able to do that, but in reality I think it's gonna be like four hundred or like three seventy five to four twenty five I think for digital and then um either I think 499 for the um, uh, this model as well I think I think Sony really wants you to have that digital one they make more money on it in the, in the long run with everything being through their store that you are able to download so um, that's just progression of consoles we're getting you know ones with this ones without this that's the way it is I'm really excited to see what the actual cooling is a teardown of the PS5 uh, that that's that's a mystery to me. I just heard about that it might be liquid metal on it. I I'm going to be interested to see the longevity. Uh, I you know, liquid metal is great for cooling everything else. I just don't know if that you know accidentally seeps out, touches something. It's a console oriented and it doesn't you know in a wrong way. Is there a warranty issue with that? That would be one of my con one of my concerns. Just thinking through the process of having liquid metal because um, it will short things right. It's very good at that. But overall, I think that this whole console generation is going to be a great jump for gaming going forward. And there's been, you know, a lower power console like the Xbox One S. I think it's going to, I think it's just the training of Microsoft to be able to say you can target different things with your games, right? It's a computer gaming model coming into consoles just with less versions, right? Or less options, I should say. You have two options instead of un basically unlimited. Um, Sony, I think they want to peg more a traditional console type where you're going to get this, expect this. And um, just different site development stuff, different um, things you'll have to compile and work towards as a developer. And, you know, it's a learning curve. Don't expect everything to work great out of the box. I think that there's going to be a learning curve here with the consoles. I think Sony's going to have a lot more success because Sony was so far ahead in the last console generation. They've been already doing some development on games beforehand. Moore's Law is Dead has said that there was at a point in time that Sony switched over. And if that's true, which I have no reason not to, it seems like, that, I mean, if I was in Sony's position, I'd do that too. And so if they can get that development out a little bit more with these consoles, get those refinements, you really use that SSD. I'm really excited about these SSD stuff. And 2021 is right around the corner with Microsoft's, what is it, direct... Uh, with direct drive or whatever it is to help you know DirectX drive or to get be able to load data faster with the SSD onto the graphics card if that's all coming this stuff is really gonna start progressing faster and faster we're gonna get better games and there's gonna be higher requirements for games SSD stuff like that but we're gonna start moving in towards you know the next what I really see is the next generation of gaming that's faster storage usage the um, the ray tracing stuff and really start stepping forward of what a graphics card can do and what a console or whatever else we're doing in gaming to do but I, it's going to take three four years before it really sets in i think because it all takes time so that's a little bit of my, my thoughts here the consoles the pricing what's going on with the graphics cards here cpus from amd um we got the nvidia going on the only thing one i hasn't mentioned really is intel and uh Wait to 2021 and we might have something from them as well. So uh, we will see. Uh, yeah, I, I really hope Intel 
kind of straightens out what they have going on. Uh, Intel's just in a rough spot right now. And they, they need somebody there to straighten it out. And until they do straighten it out, and maybe with their changes that they made, they'll have it all straightened out. But only time will tell at this point, right? It's just a recent change, and we really have to let that change kind of um, ferment a little bit until we get the result. We until they, until they see some results from it. And they may need to make another change. We don't know yet. It, you're starting on this path, restructuring. Remember, AMD was in a worse position, right? AMD was in a financial mess, and you know, Rory Reed and CEO, and then the Lisa Sue came in and it took her a little bit to turn it around, get, they really had to buckle down to do things. And I see Intel needing to do that as well. Get back in track, buckle down and do something and do it and try to make sure you're putting the best foot forward and do it right. And right doesn't mean like, oh, you're gonna be perfect coming out of this, but right doesn't mean try to make sure that you're putting in checks that you can then go back and review to make sure that you're in a progression path doing, um, getting better rather than a progression path of um, taking a shot in the dark and hoping you're getting there. So with that, that's all I got going on. Hopefully you didn't hear uh, the baby too much in the background. Uh, she can get kind of loud now that she got one of her tubes out and she likes to be able to make more noise now. Um, but hopefully um, you didn't hear too much there in the background. I do have a couple reviews here coming up and I need to get those out. I'm really, I'm really enjoying this mouse, um, uh, especially from working from home, being on the mouse all the time, to being a computer, computer developer, guess what, I'm using a keyboard and mouse all day. So um, really some good stuff though. But I do wanna thank you guys for watching and helping this channel grow. I really appreciate it, you guys are great. And until next time, leave your comments below. I'm excited to read them about what you think about these next releases coming up. What do you want to get? What are you planning on buying here with uh, with the Ryzen CPUs, the uh, uh, RTX NVIDIA GPUs, the AMD GPUs coming out, the consoles coming up, the Xbox, PS5. It's going to be a big year. Um, I'm leaning towards maybe getting the Xbox Series X. Um, man, I really like that PS5 too. It, it looks good. Um, I really want to see the cooling. I like a xbox uh series s as well and a new couple gpus man so i like a lot of things but i can't get it all so let me know what you well maybe do a list what do you want and then what do you want uh, what would you like to have or or yeah or what can you afford so that too right so with that i want to thank you guys for watching god bless and have a great day